DFM to me um, has been around for a long time. I know that it was originally invented, invented uh, sometime in World War II to help out with the, uh, uh, the development and the build of aircraft. Um, for me personally, um, it started uh, in about 1983 when we were using something called Design for Automation. That helped us change the rules from a manufacturing standpoint and actually helped us actually make it easier to, uh, to actually put the product together manually. The future of DFM, um, in essence, is always going to be changing with every technological advancement. Like in the olden days when we had inline machine tools, we had a set of rules and those parameters couldn't be broken. We were stuck in a paradigm that we couldn't get out of. Then along came robotics and now we've got additive manufacturing. And with additive manufacturing, we can make an egg uh, or maybe this impossible turbine. Um, these are things that we couldn't do not five years ago. For products like aircraft and aerospace, you have the highest potential for cost, weight, and uh, productivity improvements. You're followed closely by medical, and then after that, appliances. And then after that, it's, uh, things change fairly rapidly, so the, the numbers are a little different. But a general rule of thumb is, if the product is uh, about 15 years old, you're gonna see a 15% reduction in cost. And then we'll also get increases in productivity and you're also gonna see um, uh, features that you wouldn't be able to do before that you can do now. The um, products that are older than 15 years, uh, we, have, uh, we, we just finished one off uh, three weeks ago, a project for a customer. 75% of the parts disappeared, 80% of the cost disappeared, and you got a quality increase of 900%. I'm very hopeful that you'll be able to show up at the, uh, the, the DFM conference in, uh, in Toronto, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk.